Good morning. God bless you all. Please stand. I was made aware of something recently that I didn't know about, so I wanted to share it with you. And it's about being thankful or grateful. And we kind of take it for granted at times what it means, actually. Amen. But in... Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, it says, In every situation, no matter what circumstance, be thankful and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And in Ephesians 5, verse 20, it says, Always giving thanks to God the Father for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in the Strong's Concordance, that can be a noun and an adjective, and I won't go into all of the, the Greek part of it, but we know being thankful is being grateful, and oftentimes, if, if something happens to us, being good or bad, we as humans have, this, have a, like a tunnel vision. And, and if something bad happens, we kind of just focus on the bad, and, and it either brings us down or it brings us anger. Or if somebody does something against us, uh, we have a hard time dealing with it. Or if something really good happens to us, say you win the lottery or something, yeah. then you get to the position to where you think, I can do this. I can handle this. I can get this on my own. Yeah. But what I actually found when studying out a little bit in the concordance is, Thankfulness is for God's grace. Amen. Amen. And as we head down this road, if you happen to have something either good or bad happen to you, you, you think, why in every situation, no matter what circumstance, uh -huh. and continually, why, Lord, why do we do this? Why do you want us to do this? Yeah. And he says, when you pause, when something good or bad happens, and you give me thanks, you're actually noting my grace in your life. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and it's just, it, it, it should bring you back to the Lord and His grace, not the direction that you're headed, good or bad. Right. Okay? So I just thought I would share that with you this morning. Joy to the world the Lord has come. Let us Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat.
heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their song imply, while fields and floods, rock hills and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow, no thorns invest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found.
is your unfailing love. Your cross has spoken mercy over me. Yes. I have seen and ear of her, our hearts could fully know. How glorious, how beautiful you fills the sky your mighty works display for all to see the beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to see how marvelous how wonderful you are Jesus my Lord Captured my heart with your love. Nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. Oh, Jesus, my Lord, I love you. Jesus, my Lord, I adore. Jesus, my Lord, I Your unfailing love, cross has spoken mercy over me. I'll sing, hear as heard, your heart can fully know. this morning, Lord. 
We give you glory, Lord, and honor in your house. Oh, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing glory to your name.
fill it up and make me whole fill my cup Lord I lift it up Lord come and quench this thirsting of clap this morning glory to god isn't god a good god amen shake hands this morning and be friendly amen shake hands and be friendly this morning thank you jesus oh there
seated this morning. Glory. You know, uh, in our spiritual walk with God, uh, sometimes we can compare it to a garden. Amen? And in the garden, sometimes there's weeds. In our garden, there's always weeds. Sometimes more weeds than garden. <laughs> And sometimes we think the weeds are garden. <laughs> okay. But I was thinking this morning, and we was worshiping God, and I don't know why the scripture went through my mind, but in Hebrews uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 2, no, uh, verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? You know that you want to destroy your spiritual life? Neglect it. Yeah, that's it. That'll do it. You want to see your garden overtaken by weeds? Neglect it. Amen. Amen? Because, in see, sometimes we think as Christians, well, God, here I am, you just do it, you know. Uh, uh, I got to tell you, it's a partnership here. Uh, God expects us to weed out the weeds in our life. Oh, Amen? Wow. And we cannot uh, uh, continually walk in a spiritual place with God when we're not reading and we're not praying and we're not seeking God at all in our life. Then we're neglecting. And you know what happens? Weeds begin to grow up in your life. Things that begin to take up your time that you used to give to God. Yes, amen. amen? True. Somebody's ever sat down in front of the TV. Mm-hmm. Where was they at the end of the evening? <laughs> Still sitting in front of the TV. <laughs> amen. Except Charlie, he can't figure out how to operate his, so he don't. <laughs> <laughs> Still got the turn. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, how should we neglect so great a salvation? God has done so much for us. Why should we neglect what God has done? God has placed something powerful and the most treasured thing in our life, and that's his son. Why should we neglect him in our life? You neglect something long enough, it will die. Yes, that's true. It will die. Amen. And so this morning, let's not neglect our Lord. This is the season to give him praise. We should give him praise all year, Thank but it's you. not about the gifts. It's not about the trees, nor the lights, nor the decorations. It's about Jesus. Yes, it That's right. it it's all about him. And some people, well, he wasn't really born this day. Does it really matter? We put a date aside to celebrate his birth. Does it really matter what date it is? Come on. We get so technical that we get uh, staunch and well, it's got to be my way, you know? Uh, you know? Come on. Ease up on things. Ease up on people. Let, let God have his way in your life and begin to give him praise and glory yes. and thank him for all that he's done. When Brother Terry was talking this morning, I was thinking, I, I'm telling you, people are ungrateful and unthankful. Yes. You know how to tell? Listen to them. Because right. <laughs> all that comes out, you don't really don't want to know what comes out. <laughs> You really don't want to hear what's coming out because misery loves company. <laughs> and so, but we, we should be thankful this time of year, you know. And oh, we yeah. passed out these sheets that we're going to help this family. Uh, uh, the little girl was burnt real bad in a, in a fire, and uh, they, they live on disability, and they have very limited income. And we've done this last year. We helped the family, and this year we're doing it again. 
And so we give you the papers. And if you want to buy a gift, that's fine. If you want to give us some money, and we'll buy the gifts, whatever. But then we'll take them down. And every year, they give us three families to pick from. And we always pick one that we seem to be the most needful. Amen. I mean, uh, the, little, the mother had lost her job because she had to take off work because her little girl was so burnt, so bad that she had to take care of her. And, and, the, and the father is disabled. And so they have just like six or $700 coming in in a month. That's it. How many of us could live on six or $700 a month? Amen. And so we are doing that this year. And she probably is going to talk more about it. But anyway, we do it every year. I have something else I want to do this morning that's not on the agenda. Mm. Hallelujah. Uh, I want Sister uh, Mary to come up and Sister Colleen to come up. Oh, now you go. <laughs> uh, you'll, it'll be all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Embarrassment to be over later today. <laughs> Sister Mary and Sister Colleen a while back asked to join the church. They filled out the paperwork. The committee was late getting it done. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> anyway, we appreciate anybody that wants to join our church. It, it speaks loads to us that you're committed to us and you're here to help us in, in whatever way you can. And so we appreciate so much you wanting to do that. Now, I want everybody to stand. And if you'll play something, Sister Clark, we're going to come by and give them the right hand of fellowship. Everybody just come by and, and, sh and give them the right hand of fellowship. Glory. Do away Glory. with sin and let the Spirit live within. Christ will give us the strength to overcome. Then He'll guide us, lead us on. For in Christ we are made strong. Christ will give us the strength to overcome. Hallelujah. We'll overcome. Yes. We'll overcome. We'll overcome. We'll overcome. By the blood of the Lamb, we'll overcome. So let's rejoice and let's proclaim we're more than conquerors in his name will overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We can live a happy life yes. through our pain and through our strife. Christ will give us the strength to overcome. Yes. Holy Ghost will give us power every day and every hour. Christ will give us the strength to overcome. We'll overcome. Yes. overcome. We'll overcome. We'll overcome. We'll overcome. So let's, let's rejoice and let's proclaim we're more than conquerors in his name. We'll overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We'll overcome by Thank the you. blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Yeah. Sister Mary don't like to be out front anywhere. <laughs> So uh, when we had the Bible study, we had the camera on. I always point it right at her. <laughs> but anyway, you could be seated. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to, we appreciate that. Really, we really do appreciate those who want to join the church. Uh, we do have a, uh, a, a few people out today. Sickness is going around. And uh, Sister Katrina called us, and she'd been in the hospital, and she asked us to, to pray for her today. Uh, how many knows who Katrina, Sister Katrina and Brother Tony sit over here? Uh, anyway, uh, they've been sick, and so we're going to pray for them this morning. Any other prayer requests this morning? I want to pray for my daughter, Christy. She's been battling sickness, uh, had pneumonia. I, I thank God that she's here this morning. In fact, won't you come up? We're going to anoint you and pray for you with oil anybody else need prayer this morning why suffer through the service let god touch you now yeah. amen yeah. amen and because god is uh i don't know what happened to my oil oh yeah there it is <laughs> who okay yeah i kind of read that hallelujah 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 Father God, right now, we rebuke this sickness in the name of Jesus. Yes. You're the healer, Lord. You're Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God, our healer. God, there's nothing too hard for you, God. You promised us your healing, God. And God, we stand on that promise yes. this morning, God. We confess to you, God, that we need healing right now in our body, Lord. Strengthen this body, God, and rebuke this sickness that continually comes against her. In the name of Jesus, we pray against it. Amen and amen. Amen. 
Father, we pray for all those that are sick, God, all those that are battling, God, in their lives, God. It's Brother, Sister Katrina and Brother Tony and Danny and Patty and, and Felicia, God, we lift them up to you, Father. We pray for the enemy's power to be broken in their lives, for your name to be exalted and glorified. God, there's none greater than thee. There's none that can be compared to thee. You're the healer. You're the deliverer. You're the savior of the world, Father. God, we look to you and you alone this morning. You're the only one, God. We look to you, God, for the answers, for the healings, for the deliverances, Father. We look to you for salvation, Lord God, for you are our savior. And we give you praise and glory in your house this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, yes. amen. Brother Joe, come on, take off right now. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Let's all stand today, if we would. <coughs> Let's act like kings today. What do you think? Remember the first Christmas? Three kings traveled. For a baby they didn't know. For a God they'd never met. And what they bring him? The best they had. Frankincense, myrrh. What was the third? Gold. The best things they had for him. That's all God asked for us. Give our best and give our hearts to him, right? Hallelujah. Let's bring our offering up today, folks. We'll pray afterwards. Hallelujah. <laughs> Gonna keep a walking, keep a talking, keep singing in Jesus' name. Gonna keep believing and receiving everything that He has for me. Keep lifting my voice, Come on. clapping my hands, yes. taking all I can to the promised land. I keep a walking and a talking and a singing in Jesus' name. I keep a walking, walking. keep a talking. I'm gonna keep talking. I keep singing in Jesus' name. I'm gonna keep believing and receiving everything that He has for me. Keep lifting my voice, clapping my hands, taking all I can to the promised land. I keep a walking and a talking and a singing in Jesus' name. Stretch your hands this way, folks. Lord, we come together as a body today, God, to serve you and to love you, God, like you've loved us, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we're able to give back, Lord, because you've blessed us, Father. It all comes from you, God. And we thank, thank you, you to meet the needs that's given for God. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I don't know, you be seated again. <laughs> Glory. You know, I... You know, a lot of people having storms in their life, yeah. Uh, but I put something on Facebook, and it be kind of, be kind of because <laughs> it's, I think this, that too often we let people pull us into their storms. We need to pull them into our peace. <laughs> Quell the storms in their life. Because we have the one who lives within us who is the storm queller. Amen. He can stop the storms in our life. Amen. Uh, we're going to do Penny March. We, yeah. need a, we need drum roll. I need help. Can Why? I get some help this morning? Yeah. Uh, uh, Come on. Can I get you. some help? Ooh, yeah. Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, uh, sister, you can thank Sister Joyce for all those pennies. Yeah, Amen. thank you, Sister Joyce. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. God. 
<laughs> Amen. All right, Brother Steve's going to sing for us this morning. And then we'll have an announcement. <laughs> Baby Jesus lying in a manger So pure and holy is he The wise men knew of his coming Bringing gifts to Gary before Put the announcements up, please. Well, glory. You know, uh, I just want to say something about when Brother Terry said that some people think the uh, weeds are flowers. Well, and I told him, yeah, well, that's okay. You know, a long time ago, you know, I love flowers. I love plants, but you know what? I kill them. I mean, I can kill them. And Sister Clark always has such a beautiful garden, you know, and she always has had, ever since I've known her for 40-some years now. And, you know, one time I said, Oh, Sister Clark, you need to come see my flowers. I said, They're blooming. Oh, they're just getting so big and beautiful. And so she came over, and she kind of snickered, and I said, well, well, what? She said, Those are weeds. No wonder they're blooming and looking so beautiful. You've been watering them and, you know, fertilizing them and everything. So, you know, it's true. What we feed is what will grow, well, isn't it? You feed to the Spirit, the Spirit will grow. You feed to those weeds, and believe me, they'll take over the whole garden. That I do know. And even today, I still can't do flowers. I'm just no good at it. My dad was, but, you know, I'm not. <laughs> But praise the Lord. That's what he was referring to when he said that. <laughs> Yesterday, the men had their uh, uh, breakfast. I suppose they had a good breakfast. 
Yeah, I didn't get to go. On the 16th of December, which is next Saturday, from 2 to 4, we will be having up in the fellowship hall a happy birthday Jesus party. Now, it'll be from 2 to 4, and boys and men bring a guy's gift, and girls and ladies bring a girl's gift, and the limit is $110 per gift for me. <laughs> Everybody else is a $10 limit. No, that's a typo. I'm kidding, of course. And then next Sunday is our ugly sweater contest. Now, I got to admit, Pastor, he really didn't want to do it, and I told him, I said, <laughs> uh, no way, it was your idea, you're doing it. <laughs> so he went out shopping this weekend, and he got him a ugly sweater. So I, I think you'll enjoy that next Sunday. And then on the 24th, which is our Christmas Eve day uh, service, we will be having the... Uh, a program for Christmas. So uh, I want as many children that can be here to come because I will use them in our program, okay? And we really need to go over that next Sunday. And then on the 31st New Year's Eve evening service will be from 9 o'clock, of course, till midnight. And we'll start out upstairs with some uh, snacks and a little bit of fellowship. And we'll come down, have some praise and worship and some prayer and uh, help uh, bring in the new year. Amen? And I do want to say thank you to all of those who have already given me money for the family. We greatly appreciate it. And those of you that did not get a, a list of, of the family, I'll get you one, okay? But uh, we are supporting this family this year. And like Pastor said, you know, they live on 700 and something dollars a month. And that's what they get for disability. So, you know, it's hard. And when you got children that have needs, it, it's heartbreaking. You know, I can tell you this. When we were, uh, our kids were young, I think together we made what? Maybe $300 a week, maybe. And, you know, we had to always let a light bill go, a gas bill go. We never had a telephone. We had to let something go so that we can give to our children. Now, God always did. He provided. One year, we couldn't buy one thing, not one thing for our children. But God, in his mercy and grace, he provided a complete Christmas for our children. And we're so thankful to God for all of his provision. But I know what it is to be in need. And when you got kids and you can't give them things, it hurts. It's just heart-wrenching. Anyway, it was to me. But praise the Lord, you know, God is always good and God is able and he always meets the need. And we're so thankful for God for all those things and sending us his precious Jesus down for our salvation. And we're so thankful for him. Amen? Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Children's Church. <laughs> Lord. If you'll put up that slide, please. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. Second Peter. It's right after First Peter. It's funny how it goes that way. Huh? I don't know. I have no idea. Second Peter, last week we ministered out of Second Peter 1, 3. According to his divine power, it has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. This week I want to minister on the very next verse, and that is this. He said, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be what? Partakers of what? His divine nature. Come on. And having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, the Wyman translation reads it like this. I kind of like it. It is by means of these that he has granted us 
his precious and wondrous promises in order that through them you may, may one and all become sharers in the very nature of God. Having completely escaped the corruption that exists in the world through earthly cravings. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise and glory this night. Or this day, I guess. It's not night. But we give you praise and glory and we're thankful today for your word. Father, we ask that you would anoint our ears to hear this morning. Anoint our mouths to speak the word, Father. And God, anoint us to, to allow your Holy Spirit to speak through us, Father. God, it's your word. And we're just your vessel this morning. And we're very humble to be in this place with you, Lord. God, let us not do it by flesh, but let us do it by the Spirit, Lord. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Another translation, it says it is in the NIV. It says this, uh, for by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. So that by then you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world by lust. You know that, uh, how many knows what a promise is? It used to be that was all I needed. That was my promise. I would fulfill whatever I said. Today, we got to have lawyers draw out contracts so they can't break their promise. Amen? And even if you have a contract, they'll have lawyers to try to break that contract. <laughs> Amen? And so, uh, but I want to tell you today that our Savior, our God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit have made certain promises to us, and you don't have to have a lawyer to hold them to it. They will hold their self to that. God will hold himself to his word. Amen? How many of you ever felt like God didn't fulfill a promise? He will. You know? God will. God will fulfill his promises. He said this. He said, he said, for by these he has granted. It means this. Granted means to, to bestow gratuitously. It means to carry out with the ideal that the gift is worth something. Isn't God's promises worth something? Amen? He promised to save you. Isn't that worth something? Amen? He promised his son he would die on the cross and shed his precious blood so that you might have salvation. That was his promise. He fulfilled his word on that day when Jesus hung on that cross. God has given us many precious promises that he literally fulfills. He will never fail his word. See, in this tense here, what it means is God has already done it, and God will continue to do it. God has done his promise, but he'll continually fulfill his promises to us. So it's not a past tense. It's not, it's not over. God's promises are still relevant today as they were 2,000 years ago. God's promises are still like money in a bank. You can count on those promises. If we could not count on God's promises, then we could not know him as Savior because that is one of his most precious promises. Peter says this, that they are precious promises. How many find the word of God to be very precious? We talked about earlier See, I think that sin, the reason sometimes we don't see the promises of God fulfilled in our lives because we don't really believe God's going to do it. We know, we know, we know what God's word says, but we really don't believe God's going to do it. Really? Think about that just for a minute. See, the, the, the man who came to Jesus, he said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. He said, I know you can do it, but I don't know if you will do it. That's what he was saying. And that's the way we, if we come to God in that way in our prayer life, we're, we, we need to know that God will fulfill his promises. 
Amen. We need to know that we serve a God, that we don't have to draw up contracts and everything else, but it's like a handshake, and we know that God will fulfill every promise he's made to us. Amen? And so when God promises you to meet all your needs according to his riches and glory, you can put it in the bank. It's going to happen because God promised you that. See, they're precious. They're like, uh, uh, his promises are like precious stones that, that is laid in the foundation of our, our, our life that's weaved within us and may become very precious to us. And we begin to stand on those promises and we begin to trust in those things. And we begin to trust in God's word and we esteem them highly in our lives. See, uh, how many has ever heard of D.L. Moody? Great Bible scholar. In his Bible, uh, when they got his Bible up, they found these letters in his Bible, T and P, by different verses. And they couldn't figure out why T and P. And finally, somebody figured out he wrote by every promise, tried and proved. <laughs> I not only tried his promise, but I proved his promise in my life. Amen. And, and so when we get by those promises, maybe you ought to do that, right? T and P. I, God, I've tried your promises, and you've proved your promises in my life over and over again. See, uh, the enemy tries to rob us of the promise of God. When I got saved, man, I, I, I knew I got saved. And I knew his promise to me was that he would save my soul and fill me with his Holy Spirit. And so, uh, but when you, sometimes when you begin to stand on the promises of God, you begin to know how precious they are and how like they're gold and silver and precious stones and you begin to stand those old promises. The enemy kind of comes in to rob you of the promises of God. Tries to make doubt come in. Fear come in. You get a di diagnosis of cancer, what happens? You begin, that fear tries to come in. But if we stand on the promises of God, he said, I wish above all that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So when we begin to stand on that promise and say, God, I don't care what I don't uh, I don't care what the devil says, I don't care what the doctor says, I only care about what your word says, and that you wish above all thy prosper and be in health, even as my soul promise. So I'm standing on your promises, Lord. I know that by your stripes I am healed. Uh, he also said, by your stripes I was healed. And so it's already happened in my life. Now I just gotta stand on your promises and see it being manifested in in my mind, because remember, these are precious promises that God gives us. They're not to be taken lightly. They're not to be read over. They're, just, they're, they're to be spent some time on thinking about what God has promised you in his life, in your life. And so when we begin to look at these promises, like D.L. Moody, we begin to write, hey, tried it. It proved, I proved it in my life. God proved it to me in my life. See, he says this in, in uh, Joshua 23, uh, 14. And behold, this day I'm going the way of all the earth. This is Moses. And you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing, listen, not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spoke. Not one thing, Charlie, not one word failed. What I said was accomplished. That's the kind of God we serve. Not one word. If God says he'll heal you, it will not fail. He will not fail you. If God says he'll prosper you, he will not fail you. Not one word will fail. Listen, I, I, when I read that, it excited me. Yeah, the Lord God, your spake concerning you are, are all are come to pass unto you, and not one thing has failed thereof. Not one thing has failed thereof. He says over in Joshua 21, 43, and 45, And the Lord God gave unto Israel all the land which he swore unto their fathers. All the land. And they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest about. 
according to all that he swore unto the fathers, and there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies in their hand. There fell not aught any of his good things which he spoke. Isn't that something? Amen. How many has uh, made promises to you and not, fa- and not kept them? They've failed. But God makes a promise and he will not fail. Not one word will fail when God speaks it. It says this, Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. What has God promised us? He's promised us rest. You know where the struggle comes? It doesn't come from God. It comes from our unbelief. We're not resting in his promises because we're fighting against believing in him. And so our, our trouble comes our, when we don't have our rest in our life. It's because we're struggling with believing him. Come on. According to all these promises, there is not failed. Again, Moses not failed one word. Three times God spoke this. I have not failed you one time. It's emphatic. When God speaks in threes, it's emphatic. God is trying to get a truth to us. He's trying to get us to realize that he's a God who cannot fail. He will keep his promises to his people. And so when God speaks something three times in three different places, God is being very emphatic about what he's saying. He's telling us this, this, I will not fail you. Men will fail you. Neighbors will fail you. Jobs will fail you. Governments will fail you, but I, your God, will not fail you. Not one word will fail. What I have spoken will come to pass. Now you look at this for a minute. Just uh, I was, I've been studying about the, the prophecies of Jesus. There, there was over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus, and not one failed. Every one came to pass. Everyone came to pass. And so God is one who keeps his word to us. He keeps his promises us. And they are what? They are magnificent promises. You know, he says this. In that, he said that, that. Let me go back there. I want to read that again. He said precious and magnificent promises. You know what magnificent is? Is a word Greek, megatos. You know what that means? Mega. You know where Jesus used the same word? When the, the little widow woman who had a, a, a child who was sick and, and she was begging him for to heal, and, and she said, he said, well, I don't give bread to the dogs. How many would get discouraged over that? <laughs> that don't sound like a promise. <laughs> He says, true, master, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the table, under the table. And he said, never have I seen so great a faith as this. That great is mega, mega faith. When we begin to stand on God's promises, he gives us mega faith to believe him. See, I believe Moses had mega faith when he stood before the Red Sea and he called it out and the, and the water parted. It took faith to move that sea, amen? I believe it took faith for Daniel in the lion's den. I, I, tell you, I believe, it, believe it took de- mega faith. I believe it took mega faith for those in, in the fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I feel that God wants to give us mega faith in his promises. They are mega promises. They are powerful. They are are omnipotent. There is nothing that can shake them. They're built on a strong foundation and no devil in hell, no person in this world can shake the foundation that God has placed within our life. We give the devil too much credit. Hey, come on. God is greater than him. Most of the time it comes from ourselves but not him. So it's super pearl of it, 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 He's trying to tell us. He's trying to sh- uh, draw a picture here. He says, I'm not just giving you a promise. I'm giving you a mega promise. I'm not, I'm not going to just give you a little. It's a, if I had something, I'll just do, use it. I don't want to use that. 
It's like you throw that bucket out. And God said, now wait a minute. That ain't enough. We're going to throw it over there. Because I am going to do more than what you think. Amen. What you thought is just what a little bit what I can do. I am a mega God. I am a God who can fulfill his promise. So he wanted us to see that this is great and mega promises. And we don't want to overlook these things in our life. We want to be like uh, Billy Sunday. We want to write in our Bible, tried, proved. Amen. Jesus saved your soul. Find that promise, right? Tried and proved. Come on. So that superlative there, that word means it surpasses everything you could think of. Isn't that how God does? Uh -huh. So I'm going to give you above and beyond what you can even can think or conceive in your heart. We can't conceive what God wants to do in our lives. But God's going to do it. Amen. And we're going to say, whoa, what, what happened here? Something magnificent happened in my life. You know, we really should feel that way about our salvation. Some people, oh, I got saved, but it seems like it's just a, a, an, an event in their life. It wasn't an event in my life. It was a change of life. <laughs> it, 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 it put me on a new course. It began, God began to show me his promises and he began to fulfill them one by one in my life. I got filled with the Holy Spirit at home and people came and tried to tell me it wasn't a God, it wasn't a promise. I said, I don't know what you got, but I know what I got and it's from God. <laughs> and I said, I know that I know. That's what Billy, uh, I mean, not Billy, but uh, Or Roberts used to say, I know that I know that I know that I know. You can't convince somebody that knows something. <laughs> Come on. And I know God's promises work. I've seen it over and over in this church and in my life. I've seen God fulfill his word over and over. Not one word has failed in this church. Not one word has failed. If God's been in it, God has pro prospered it. Because he will not fail his promises. They are superbly, they are extreme. They are beyond our thoughts or conception. They are more than we ever thought he could do. Amen. I wonder sometimes when I think about the Red Sea, did God tell Moses I'm going to open the Red Sea? He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Right. Wow! God, that's a good idea. Just stand still let the enemy catch up with us. He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I, I wonder if God told him he's gonna, how he's going to do it. Sometimes God wants us just to stand on his promises and allow him to do it the way he wants to do it. Amen. We try to figure it out for God. Uh, well, God, what do you want me to build? A, a bridge? Or, uh, or you want us to go around it? What do you want us to do? God said, no, I just want you to stand still. Amen. I just want you to stand on my promise that I'm going to deliver you out of Egypt. I didn't bring you here to die. My promise to you is I'm going to bring you through. You know, that's what God's promises to you today. I'm going to bring you through. I'm going to bring you through your Red Seas. I'm going to bring you through your trials and your tribulations. God's promises is yea and amen to all those who believe. Amen. And so we are too often wondering if God's going to do it. We ought to know God's going to do it. We ought to expect it. We shouldn't. We, we should come to church expecting a powerful move of the Holy Spirit. We shouldn't come to church just to, to, to go to church. It's not about going to church. It's about knowing Him. It's about seeing Him fulfill His life with, through us. And we begin to stand on those promises that are precious and exceeding above and beyond everything we can think or exceed. He gives us life and that more abundantly. Amen. That's a promise. I don't know about you, but I have an abundant life. It's life beyond the ordinary. Every day is a great day with God. See, you don't have no troubles? Oh, yeah. It doesn't change what I, my relationship with God, though. doesn't change how I feel about God. doesn't change how God feels about me. 
I serve him day in and day out because I know his promises, I know his word, and they are exceeding great and precious promises, and that why by these we become partakers of his divine nature. Not, not the worldly nature, not that old self that we used to be, but that divine nature. If you want to know what the nature of God is, look over in Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit is the nature of God. What is the very nature of God? Love. God fulfilled his promises that for God so loved the world that he gave. That's a promise. He gave his only begotten son that what? There's a promise here. Whosoever believeth in him shall be saved. That's the promise. That's the promise to each and every one of us. For God so loved us that he gave I, I'm a promise maker. I'm a promise keeper. I, I promise you that if I say you're gonna, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. My word will not fail in your life. Some of you are looking at me like a cap in the front of headlights. So all of God's promises are sure and reliable and unchanging. God's never changed his mind. You know, the cross has always been in God's mind. It wasn't an afterthought because Adam failed. God knew he was going to have to have his son sacrificed. And so it's always been. So the promise has always been there. What did he didn't make? He made a promise to Eve. He said, what did he tell Eve? Your heel shall bruise the head of Satan, of the snake. That was a promise. You know that Eve looked for that promise in Cain and Abel? It wasn't there. And, and so sometimes when God makes us a promise, we're looking in the wrong places for it. Yeah. We're, we're looking so for something quick relief, something to happen because, see, uh, when you look for a quick belief, when you was living in the garden and everything was provided for you and, and everything was just hunky dory, how many remember those say hunky dory? And, uh, and everything was just good. And then one day, you mess up. You get kicked out of the garden. Now you got to toil the ground. Now you got to do it by the sweat of your brow. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> Now you've got to live in, in, in the sin life. And so all the, they, they failed in keeping their promise to God. God told them, he said, you can do anything in this garden. Just don't eat that tree. One commandment. People say, oh, I wouldn't do it. I said, yeah, you would. We're all got that propensity to do what's wrong. Okay, so this promise, all of God promises, it. they're sure to us. I, I got to confess, sometimes uh, in this ministry, I, I repeat things because I want us to understand what God's promises are. They yea and amen. Sometimes we need to hear things over and over until they get into our spirit. Come on. God's promises are yea and amen to those who believe. Come on. And so I, I sometimes will repeat myself, but it's only because I feel the unction of the Holy Spirit within me telling me, keep reminding them, keep telling them who they are in me, keep telling them my promises that I've made to them, keep reminding them of what I've done for them. See, even Paul had trouble with Timothy. He said, Timothy, stir up the gift that lieth within you. Come on. Timothy was a uh, leader of the church, but Paul wrote to him, Timothy, get yourself out of that rut you're in. Begin to get excited about God again. Begin to get excited about his promises. Begin to get excited about coming to church. Instead of getting up, oh Lord, it's Sunday. Nobody's ever done that. 
You know why we do that? Because we're not living in his promises. We're, we're, we're thinking of, it's just another Sunday. Got to hear that boring preacher again. <laughs> Can I read something that A.W. Tozer wrote? A great man of God, uh, who his writing, would you would think he was living today in his writings, because what he wrote is still relevant today. He says this, I must confess this. Why do I insist that all Christians should know for themselves the kind of God they love and serve? It's because all the promises of God rest completely upon his character. Why do I insist that all Christians should search the scriptures and learn as much as they can about this God who is dealing with them? It's because their faith will only spring up naturally and joyfully as they find that our God is trustworthy and fully able to perform every promise he has made. We need today a fresh spirit of anticipation that springs out of the promises of God. We must declare war on the mood of non-expectation and come together with what childlike faith. Only then can we know again the beauty and the wonder of the Lord's presence among us. True faith is never found alone. It's always accompanied by expectation. Faith always expects. The man who believes the promises of God expects to see them fulfilled. Where there is no expectation, there is no faith. That's what Tozer said. If you come into this church not expecting God to move, then your faith is not where it should be. But if you come into this church expecting to hear from God, to worship God, to see the presence of God, see, what would happen if we would come into the house of God full of expectation, expecting somebody to be healed, expecting somebody to be delivered, expecting the altars to be full again, expecting God to fulfill his word, his promises to each and every one of us because God loves us so much, he was willing to give all he had to fulfill his promises to you. He gave his all. And we gave our all? God gave all. When he gave Jesus, he gave all. And so we need to begin to expect. We need to walk into the house of God with such full of expectation, such joy that the song don't got to pump us up. We're already pumped up. We may just take over if she don't watch out. <laughs> we may get so excited about the expectations of what we've come with our heart full of hope that we'll just leap up and down and, we'll, and the next person will get excited. Shout, uh, I can't even say it. Excited? <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me again. They get excited and they'll begin to leap. What would happen if we come with such expectation that when we hit the altar, everybody was hitting the altar? Some people say, I don't need to go to the altar. I go to the altar every day. Every day I go to the altar. Not because I'm a bad person, but because I need God. Amen. So what's your expectation of God today? What's the promises that God has made to you? Do you expect him to fulfill those promises? Or are you just like the guy, I believe the Lord, but I don't know if you will. Come on. If you believe, believe completely. Believe that he'll fulfill his promise. The Wycliffe commentary says this, that it's not an unusual term indicating a quiet private agreement, but a, it's a heraldic word. This promise is like it was being shouted across the heavens. My promise is being fulfilled. I'm shouting it, but my people are not hearing it. It's heraldic. It's the angels are shouting God's promises, and, and but my people 
They're not believing. They're not trusting. They're not expect. They don't have no expectations. They come to church just another Sunday, another song service, another message, and they leave this place without any expectation because they came with no expectations. Is that us? Is that not us? How many came today really expecting God to do something in this house today? Very few. Can I just tell you something this morning? God wants us to expect him to do things. You, you know how many promises they estimate in the Bible? 30,000. There's a promise for every situation. Every situation there's a promise for in the Bible. If you don't believe it, just Google it. <laughs> hey, Google, Google. Google knows more about the Bible than Christians do. <laughs> That's true. That's so true. So Corinthians, he tells us this. For all my promises are yea and amen to those that believe. There's no ifs about it. No maybes. No wondering. It's yea and amen. If I said it, I will fulfill it. How reliable is that? You can't rely on your job that way. You can't rely on other people's words. You know what, though? I thought about this when I was going over this, and I was thinking about a certain man in my life. And I know that he kept his promise. No matter how much it inconvenienced him, no matter how tired he was, he kept his promise. And that's my pastor. When he said, I will pray for you, it was a promise. You could write it down in the book because he would pray for you. No matter how he felt, no matter how tired he was, he prayed for you. You know what? I'm the same way. If someone calls me and they want me to pray, I just don't say a little angry prayer. I pray because they're God's people. And God loves them. And we're here to pray for one another. We're here to help one another. We're here to strengthen and encourage one another. And so we're here to pray. The Bible says the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Come on. Uh, what, when's the last time? You know, uh, uh, somebody, will you please pray for me? Yeah, sure. They, if they ask me in the nursing home, I pray for them right there. I, I don't go. I said, I'm not going to. And, oh, you're going to pray? I said, yeah, we're praying right now. And, oh, I wasn't expecting that. I said, no, you wasn't, but that's what God wants. We're going to pray right now. And, and so we pray right now, and I don't just pray a little prayer. I mean, if anybody's in the hallway, they're going to hear me because I'm praying. You know, and, and so, brother and sister, we have to come to that point where we are, our word is our bond. Christians shouldn't have to have contracts between one another. Their word should be their bond. God's word is our bond. We don't have to have a contract with him. We don't have to try to get lawyers to get out of the contract. All we got to do is walk away from it. Amen? John Bunyan, who spent much of his life in prison cell, came to know well these precious promises of God. He wrote that the pathway of life is strewn so thickly with the promise of God that you are impossible not to step into one every day. <laughs> he wasn't talking about his ox. <laughs> Isn't that good? Isn't that how we should look at it? My path is so filled with the presence of God, I can't hardly take a step without stepping into one of his promises. 
I can't hardly move. I can't hardly breathe without one of his promises being fulfilled in my life. Come on. He, he wants to try it. He wants us to try him, and he wants to prove that his promises will not fail. God wants to prove it to you. My promises will not fail you. I'm getting there. But with the promises of God, my eyes, well, how I see, I'm not talking about physical eyes, I'm talking about spiritual eyes here. How I see God's word is how it will be feel, fulfilled in my life. His promises will be fulfilled as I see them in my life being fulfilled in my life. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you, if you just read it and you don't really see it happening, it's not going to happen. But if you read it and you see it being fulfilled, and I'm talking about faith here because that's really what faith is, is it not? Believing that those things we cannot see is as, as though they were. Amen? And so when we look at God's promises, we're really operating in the realm of faith. We're seeing in the realm of faith. We're seeing, God, your promises, I'm healed. In the name of Jesus, I'm healed. And that's your promise, God. I see that. God, I have a light bill that needs to be paid. And I'm like a tunnel all of a sudden. And, and, and I, I, God, your promise is that you'll never fail me. You'll never see the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. That's a promise. God, I see that promise being fulfilled in my life. I ain't going to doubt it. I see it happening in my life. I see your war word coming to life in me. Isn't that what God wants? For the word to come alive in us. For us to, to let him dwell in us so that his word comes forth. See, we used to be in darkness. We used to walk in that old fleshly habits and all those bondages and fears and unbelief. But God transformed us. He moved us out of darkness into his marvelous light. A promise. He said, I'll bring you from darkness into my marvelous light. It's a promise. You don't walk in darkness no more. You walk in God's light. It's a promise. It's fixed. It's set in time. Some people, well, I came to God. No, you didn't. God came to you. Don't be so uh, arrogant. God came to you. And, and, and so all these promises, he says in Psalms 119, if you'll just allow me a few more minutes, if you will. Psalms 119, uh, 9 through 11 says, Where which shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereunto according to thy word? Come on, I'm trying to tell you how we fulfill the promises of God. I'm trying to get you to look spiritually at this this morning, that you cannot look it in the eye of the carnal, or you will not understand it. You've got to look at it in the eye of the spirit. He says this again. Let me read it one more time. He said, Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to his word. Amen. Go on. With my whole heart. My whole heart. You know how I've always done things? With my whole heart. I serve God with my whole heart. When I work for somebody, I, I work with my whole heart. I give it my all. Because I've always felt like this. God made a promise to me. If you do your best, I'll do my best. And I didn't have to depend on anybody. I give my best. I work. So well, I ain't working like that. They don't pay me enough. You took the job at that price. Come on. And, and so I give it my best. And you know what God has always done? He's honored his word in my life and always promoted me. Always promoted me. Some say, oh, man, promote. No, God has promoted me. My whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from you. What? Your commandments. Don't let me wander from this. You know, I... In the, in the Hebrew, the commandment means prescription. God's commandments are prescription. Think about that. 
Blessed thou, thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes, neither by going back from thy commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. That's what Joel said. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. If we're going to see spiritually, we better get in the Word so we can get our eyesight fixed. Jesus warned him. He said, you have eyes, but you see not. You have ears, but you don't hear. Because your mind's already made up. You've already thought. You've already figured it all out. So God can't do anything for you because you got it all figured out. You're not hearing spiritually. You're hearing in the carnal nature. You're hearing to please yourself, not to please God. Isn't that the truth? I'm almost done. I only got four more pages. <laughs> That's almost done. I'm, I'm halfway. <laughs> I ain't going to do them all because I can't. But let us look at this just one more time. Whereby are given unto us, God given to us. There's no, uh, there's no condition here. There's no condition on salvation. Come as you are. Right? God doesn't say you've got to get your life cleaned up and act straightened out before you come to him. He said, come to me with that mess and I'll straighten it out. I'll cleanse you. I'll wash you by the watering of the word. I'll make you a new creature. You can't do it. I'm the creator. I'm the one who creates a new image in you. And he said, Whereby are given us exceeding, they are given unto us. God does not make any prerequisite. He said, Come to me, and I'll do these things in your life. Exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of my divine nature. So that when you, when you begin to expect these promises to be fulfilled in your life, you know what you'll do? You'll expect to love people as God loves. You'll expect to, to be kind as God is kind. You'll expect to have joy that God has. You'll expect to have peace that God has because it's all fulfilled in his promises. They're exceeding great and precious promises. You ever seen somebody go through such a horrible trial and they had such peace through it all? Because God's promise was being fulfilled in their life of peace in the midst of storm. Or they had such joy. How can you have such joy? Because of God's promises being fulfilled in my life. God's doing something in the inside that's coming on the outside. And it's being reflected. His image is being reflected by him through me. I mean, come on. It's Paul said, it's not I that liveth, but he that liveth in me. It's not about me, it's about him. And his promises are all about him. Us seeing God allow his promises to be filled. Come with expectation. Next Sunday when you come, come expecting. Come expecting to hear the, 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 the angels singing. It has happened. I've been in Victor Tabernacle several times and you could hear a heavenly choir singing and there was no choir. But the presence of God was so strong in the house. We don't come with that expectation. We, well, it used to happen. Come on. God's the same today, yesterday, and forever. God has not changed his expectations, and we haven't changed our expectations. We've lowered them. We don't expect the gifts to be used because it's just not done today. Our expectations, we've lowered them. We've allowed ourselves to be Lord. Come on, God wants us to begin to trust him, get our expectations in him once again, and see how he will fulfill his promises in our life. And when God fulfills a promise in your life, it not only touches you, it touches people around you. Because God's not about just taking blessing, but a blessing always spreads out. Always goes out. It's not about us containing it, it's about letting God to go out from us and let him express himself through us. That's a promise. Amen? Let's everybody say. Hallelujah.
Anybody need prayer? Glory. So everybody bow their heads, close their eyes. I'm going to ask you a few questions tonight, today, and, and I'm not going to call anybody out, but if you're going through a struggle and it seems like you just can't get through it, it just seems like it's constant in your life, I want you to raise your hand this morning, and I'm going to be praying for you. Anybody? I see them hands. I see that hand. Anybody who, I see that hand. Anybody is having a fighting, a fighting a financial problem or struggling, I see that hand. We're going to pray for you. We see that hand. We're going to pray for you. Uh, anybody who does not know Jesus, the greatest promise there is, if you know, know him this morning, we want to pray for you. Anybody here that's not right with God that wants to be right with him. All right, let's pray. Father, we're grateful for each and every person in this place today. God, those who are going through struggles in their life and it seems like they just can't get through it, God, you're a promise keeper. God, your promises to them are yea and amen. And that struggle that the devil's told them that they're never going to get through will come to an end. It will cease to be because I am your God and I will fulfill my word in your life. Hallelujah. Those who are struggling with health and financial problems, God, God, move in their life. Lay your hand upon them, God. Let them know that, that every problem, there comes an answer. Every, every war, there's a victory. Father, let them realize you're there for them. Let them expect you, God, to move in their lives, Father. God, we thank you for it. Bless each one here today, God. Let your blessings rest on them all week long. Bless them in every endeavor, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Shake hand and be friendly.